Hello everybody, uh, it is Chris Strauss here today, and I just want to say thank you guys for the support for my channel. I can't believe that it's blown up as much as it has, and uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you for that. So for today's video, it's going to be different. It's going to be a uh, like a how-to guide on how to play Sioux Ships uh, in particular. Uh, I think Sioux Ships are a great deck, and especially for Macedon and a best of one, they actually shine pretty well compared to how they did historically in the TCG. So without without other way, let's get into the uh, let's get into the video. And I do hope you guys enjoy these really type of videos. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can do you guys good. So let's start out with the fun facts. Sioux Ships are a very unique archetype in the game. Uh, one of the fun facts about them is they're one of the only archetypes that are actually fire and aqua. Uh, it's just kind of cool to think about. Uh, this, I think there's one other card or something like that, but Sioux Ships the only archetype with that, so bravo for them. They're also based off of uh, Sushi, which is just a funny gimmick. Uh, as you can tell already, Sioux Ship is a more rogue slash gimmick deck compared to meta. So... If you're expecting like uh, a hugely meta deck, this isn't for this isn't it. But if you're looking for something that's actually a really good rogue deck and it could actually compete against the meta, this is something that uh, you might want to uh, might might want to learn how to play. So why I like to why I wanted to make this video in the first place is the simple fact is Sioux Ships are actually one of my uh, it's a very fun deck to play and it's a personal favorite of mine. Uh, I do love Sioux Ships. I think the archetype is a lot of fun to play. It's very easy to pilot. Uh, once you understand the combo lines, they don't really diverge that much, and this deck, you could splash in other archetypes into it very easily, that makes it very strong. Uh, so with that, I think it's really good for that one reason. Uh, they actually, uh, some of this small pros for Sioux Ships are just the uncanny, like, ability to pump out monsters while keeping hand advantage. So if you make any of the XZs, uh, they draw you cards, they search out cards, they can keep on replacing each other. It's pretty impressive. Kind of uh, view them as like Zodiacs, but more balanced, if that makes sense for people. Uh, so with all that out of the way, let's get into the main card. And the main card of the deck with the whole archetype revolves around is this one right here. Gunkin Suship Sari. The whole deck revolves around a vanilla monster. It's kind of think about like blue eyes, but this takes it a little more to the extreme with that. And I cannot stress enough how important Sari is to the deck. You really want this card in your hand and in rotation almost at all times. So even though it's a vanilla monster, it's not really brick. You really want it because it enables all sorts of different plays. So, and that's about it. The archetype runs really around rank four spamming. Uh, it does rank four spams really well with its monsters, and it can also do rank fives. Although I will state there's not that many rank fives in the game that are actually kind of worth going into. So I don't personally go into many of them. I just have one in my deck, and that is Super Dreadnought. But other than that, it is a possibility if you want to do that. Uh, Sioux ships do have the ability to go first, and they can make pretty good inboards that are pretty hard to break. And on top of that, they can go second with pretty easy OTK lines. They can play through disruption, but just like any rogue deck, if you get hit with you know more than one negate, you know if you get hit by Ash, Ash Blossom and Event of Permanence, your combo line might end. Uh, that's kind of a negative, but yet again, it is it is how the deck plays. Uh, it's not fun, but hey, it could, you know, it happens. So, before we get into card by card, let's just go over with the competitive uh, scene for uh, Sioux Ships in the TCG. And it is going to be a really short segment here, but the competitive scene for it in the TCG has been, um, how to put this lightly, non existent. Um, so, what happens is like Sioux Ships came out and it basically just was a gimmick deck right on release. Uh, it didn't have uh, enough support. Like, Sorry Red came out in a different set. It only had two of the extra deck monsters. And then on top of that, it just couldn't really compete. It'll make a formal inboards to do anything. Uh, Branded, uh, you know, Despia came out and it just kind of overshadowed everything. Uh, then, of course, Sprite and Tail Element. And, you know, from last year, Sue Ship just hasn't been able to make a splash. And, well, now it's just a fun, you know, competitive, I mean, it's a fun rogue or meta, uh, a fun rogue 
or gimmick deck to play at your locals, you know, but hey, just because it didn't do good in a TCG doesn't mean it doesn't do good in Master Duel. In Master Duel, it's a lot different than the TCG for one big reason, is that Master Duel is a best of one format, and the fact that you have access to more powerful hand traps in the game, like Max C, that could actually slow down your opponent's deck good enough, where, like, it could slow down your opponent's deck just enough where it allows you to actually, you know, continue getting advantage and actually being able to compete. So, like I said, in Master Duel, Sioux ships do really well, and, hey, to me, that's a lot of fun. So, with that out of the way, let's go into our next segment, the pros and cons. And I hope everybody's enjoying. So, yeah. So, the pros and cons of the deck are very simple. The pros for the deck is, one, it, it's very simple to pilot, like I said. Once you understand the combo lines and the fact that uh, Sari needs to be in your hand almost all times to enable your combos... It's pretty easy uh, to play, and the lines of it aren't that uh, difficult. There are some diverging lines depending on the extra deck you want to play, but we can get to that in a bit. But mostly, it's very easy to pilot. Secondly, it is very cheap to build a Master Duel. As you're looking here, the only cards that are required are SRs. There are no Ultra Rare Sioux Ships, which makes this deck very cheap. Uh, of course, if you want to add uh, Ultra Rare to this deck, you can, but... For the main engine of the deck, it is very cheap, which I view as a pro. Also, it can also very easily OTK. The simple fact of you going second, if you if your opponent puts one monster in attack position and if you interrupt them enough with your hand traps, uh, they lost the duel at that point because you could easily go into you know Utopia double or nothing and you could OTK like nobody's business. The last one is it has a forceful, I mean a very uh, diverse uh, toolbox of rank fours and meaning with that is like you can have multiple rank fours and everybody's actually that could kind of look a little different depending on the builds that you want to play which is kind of really fun now the cons of the deck the cons of the deck are simple one it doesn't have the greatest comeback potential if you're if you set up a board and your opponent does uh break it you're not coming back that often in fact ever <laughs> uh it's really hard and especially, like I said, in a best of one format, if you could stop them from breaking your board, you're in a really good winning position. But they do break your board. Coming back might be difficult on turn, you know, four to five. Uh, and lastly, since you do have to play a lot of vanilla monsters, you know, three in particular, this deck is prone to bricking. Uh, and a lot of your cards do revolve around Sari. So if you open hand, he has no Sari or no way to get to Sari. Uh, well, you're out of luck at that point. You bricked and move on to the next game. Uh, that is a big con. Last con is this because the con basically for almost every rogue deck or gimmick deck in existence is the simple fact is that if you can't uh, play through negation, you lose. And I really hate that in modern day Yu Gi Oh! But that is how it is. So, meaning if your opponent does put up, you know, if, it, if your opponent does negate any of your combo pieces, you could usually play through one negate. But if you, if your opponent has two to three negates on the board already or in their hand you're going to have a rough time so just to put that out there so those are the pros and cons of the deck um if you guys can think of any more please let me know in the comments i would love to hear what you guys think are the pros and cons of the deck or if i missed anything important so let's go over the cards the main deck cards of the game and like i said i recommend playing three of all of these except for the spells and traps uh but the ratios can differ based off if you want to play pure or add other engines to the deck and we'll go over what i mean by that so the first three of is the vanilla monster like i said the whole deck revolves around this card right here sorry you want to play three of this card no matter what there is no ants if buts about it play three and you're set the next card in the list is Ikra. Ikra is unique. So what Ikra does, if you control Sari, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Ikra once per turn this way. During your main phase, you can expect the top three cards of your deck. And if you do, you can either add to your hand or special summon one Sari. Also shuffle the rest into your deck. So it has a really cool special summon 
which is really easy to fulfill. Now on top of that, you can activate the top three cards to get more stars to your hand to continue your combos, or special summon to continue your combos, but uh, like, uh, de de depending on what, uh, uh, what on what you have have in your hand already. So we have Sushiru. Sisru is another really cool one. If you control a Sari or a Xyz mod that has Sari as material, you can special summon this card from your hand. During your main phase, you can special summon one Gunkin monster from your hand, except itself. Then you can take any number of Gunkin Saris from your deck or graveyard and place them on top of your deck in any order. So this is a really cool recycling effect because if you have Saris already in your graveyard, you could just easily recycle them back on the top of your deck. Then using cards like Ikra, you could reveal the top, get more, and continue plays like crazy. So this is a really good card. You definitely want to run. You definitely want uh, to be playing it. Then we got three Uni. Uni is a really cool card. Also, based what this card does, if you could build one other Gunkin card in your hand, so that's any Gunkin card. And you can special summon this card from your hand, then apply the following effects based on the revealed card. If it's a Gunkin Susef Sari, you could special summon the revealed monster, or if it's any other card, place it on the bottom of your deck. Then it has the effect, you can target one Gunkin monster you control, change its level to 4 or 5, then you can add one Gunkin Sari from your deck to your hand. Uh, based what this card does is this, you can reveal any Gunkin card you have, special summon itself. If you have any other card other than Sari, it gets shuffled. I mean, it gets placed in the bottom of the deck, but you could change this level to four at that point and get sorry to your hand right away. And depending on what other cards you have, continue your combos right away. Uh, it's a really good card. Uh, really amazing. Definitely worth playing. Now for the newest edition of the sorry cards that got, I mean, of uh, the Gunky cards that got added to the game is Sorry Red. Red just came out a couple weeks ago in Master Duel, and this card is definitely a three of. This basically allows you to have six copies of sorry in your deck. So what this card does is very simple. This card's name becomes Gunkin Suship Sari on the hand, deck, graveyard, or on the field. You can only use the following effects of Sari once per turn. You could build one other Gunkin Suship Sari in your hand, special summon this card from your hand, then you could apply the effect. Special summon one Gunkin monster from your deck, except itself, but negate its effects, if any, then special summon one extra deck monster that mentions uh, the monster that you special summoned, uh, using that monster's card material. So basically what it means is you could reveal sorry from your hand. You could reveal sorry. Special summon red. Then you can special summon any of you can special summon Ikra, Sushiru, Uruni from your deck and immediately go into their corresponding monsters. And this one requires Ikra, this one requires Sushiru, and this one requires Uni. So it's a one card Xyz. Definitely worth playing. You want to run three of it. This allows you to have six cards i mean six sorry uh, sorry in your deck which is amazing now the field spell i run as a one of or if i'm running as an engine and like other and, and like another deck i don't use it at all and i would explain what i mean by that so once per turn if you no more special summon a gunkin monster even during the damage step you could place one gunkin card from your deck on top of your deck then once per turn, if a face-up Gunkin monster you control with special summon from the extra deck is sent to the graveyard by the opponent's card, activate this effect. You could the opponent pays life points equal to that card's defense. Then you could apply this effect. Special summon one Gunkin Slaps Sorry from your hand. Then special summon one Gunkin Xyz monster from your extra deck using that card. So what this card does is this gives you more advantage. One, it could allow you to stack your deck for Ikra, but on top of that, it has a nice recycling effect if your opponent does get rid of get rid of uh, get rid of your Xyz. So it comes up, it's searchable in this deck, so running one of it is not bad. Then we got my one of my favorite traps. We got Gunkin Suship Daily Special. Daily Special is really cool. You could activate this card. Uh, when you activate this card, you could also reveal one Gunkin Suship Star in your hands. You reveal three Gunkin monsters from your deck. Your opponent chooses one of them to add to your hand. Also shuffle the rest into your deck. If you reveal sorry though, you could choose the card you add instead of your opponent. If this card is in your graveyard, accept the turn it was sent there. You could banish this card, then target three Gunkin monsters in your graveyard and shuffle them into the deck and draw one card. So, it has a great search effect where you could choose three cards. Your opponent chooses one of them, but if you're real sorry, you get to choose instead. So you could add any Gunkin card you want to your any Gunkin monster you want to your hand, which is amazing. And then on top of that, the graveyard effect is to recycle your sorries or recycle your mon your XC's monsters is just amazing. Definitely worth running. And that's all, guys. That's all for the main deck. Uh, seven cards, and it's really cheap. Uh, so, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed that. 
we're going to be going into cards that you could add to the deck. Well, actually, first, let's go over the extra deck before I, because I'm an idiot. Firstly, we have Dreadnought. Dreadnought is a pretty cool card. This is your OTK enabler. So if you use Sari, two materials, Sari and Ikra, if you use Sari, you could draw one card. Ikra, it gains a second attack. It also has the added effect. Once per turn, when you Gunkle Monster special summon the extra deck, inflicts battle damage or it fixed uh, battle damage to your opponent. You can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. This is your OTK enabler because attacking twice and then popping a card is amazing. We have uh, Class Carrier. Class carry revolve, I mean, revolves around two cards, Sari and Sishiru. Sari allows you to draw a card, and Sishiru allows you to add one spell or trap Gunkin card from your deck to your hand. And that has the added effect, while face-up cards in your field zone, Gunkin monsters you control, especially some of the extra deck, cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects. Also gain attack equal to the original defense. Then the lastly is Super Dreadnought. So Super Dreadnought is a really cool one. It requires Sari and Uni. So based on what this card does, the Sari, you could draw one card. And Uni, this card uh, gains the ability to attack directly. This is your Zeus enabler. So it allows you to go into Zeus to clear out the opponent's board really easily. It also has the added effect. Once per turn during your main phase or your opponent's battle phase, quick effect, you could target face up monsters your opponent controls, up to the number of Gunkle monsters you control, and special summon for the extra deck, negate their effects. So what that means is if you have like two Gunkin XZ's monsters on the field, you could target two cards on the field and... Uh, just negate their effects and that's a permanent negate so that doesn't go away uh if they're on the field it's not going to go away the turn they the next turn like it's still going to be negated and it makes it really good so definitely worth running all of these i run at one uh and the main ones depending on the build i'm playing gets played at three uh unless i'm playing a different build so with the main cards and the extra deck out of the way let's go over uh cards that you could actually like splash into it and uh i hope you guys are all enjoying and uh yeah let's get into the next section all right guys so these are cards that you could actually add into your deck or different uh archetypes you could add so like i said suit ship is really good because the simple fact is like it's a really good engine but you could actually combine other engines to make it even better the one i've been playing a lot lately has been the adventure engine since suit ships don't require the normal summon uh, they special summon themselves out really easily. Uh, Adventure is a really good card to have because it allows you to have a free negate on board with Griffin. So I've been using that. Uh, I've also been using cards like Rescue Rabbit before uh, on my alt account. And this allows you to get to, get to uh, you know, Yusari's really easily. So these are really good cards to add. But it does increase the cost of the deck because these are ultra rares. Uh, another archetype I really like to add is Magic Keys. Magic Keys also revolve around a level 4 and a 1 monster. And a simple fact with Sky Blaster. And Magic Keys allow you to actually end on some pretty cool end boards that are really hard to break. You could also add some really cool extenders like the Tinny Spirit Shahada. Shahada is a level 4 monster that you could easily sp uh, special summon if you control no effect monsters. So it's a really great extender. You could also play cards like Hat Tricker, because before Mage Hat Tricker, is if, you, if the two monsters are on the field, you can special summon this card. It's a level 4, and it fits the theme of the deck really well. You could combine it. I have not personally done this, but you can combine it with the archetype Time Thief. Time Thief is yet again another rank 4 uh, spam type of deck that has really powerful boss monsters, and it does complement Sioux Ships quite a bit. Uh, other cards to be playing is unexpected die if you control no monsters you can fetch someone one level four lower normal monster from your normal uh from your net uh, from your deck the fact is this gets sorry on the field right away so you almost have almost constant ways to get it uh painful decision is another good card to have you can send one level four lower normal monster from your deck to your graveyard if you do add one monster from the same name from your deck to your hand you can only activate painful choice once per turn so this allows you to get sorry to your hand right away this allows you to basically run nine copies of sorry uh, Instant Fusion, I use this on my alt account quite a bit, and this is a really good card to be playing because of the simple fact it allows you to have an other extender to continue playing through negates. Instant Fusion allows you to go into cards like Darkfire Dragon, which is a level 4, and it's all using it for is that one purpose, it's that it's a level 4 monster. And the fact that it allows you to go into more, 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 more though if you rank 4 plays. Another really good one is uh, Shade Brigadine. Shade Brigadine is, yet yeah, again, a free level 4 special summon that you could use to extend your plays like crazy. 
And lastly, Piercing the Darkness is a really good card, and it allows you to really uh, attack over high boss monsters, high attack boss monsters, really easily. If you control, if you normal or special summon a non-token normal monster, except during the damage step, you can draw one card. When an attack is declared involving an opponent's monster and a monster you control that is level five or higher normal monster, or is a ritual summon using a normal monster, or fusion sequel or exceeds summon using a normal monster's material, you can make that monster you control gain an attack equal to the opponent's attacks monster until the end of this turn you can only use the effect of piercing in darkness once per turn so this is a really good card to use i was using it for a long time and uh, i do recommend it uh, also you could even use like the fusion destiny package because fusion destiny just raises raises the ceiling on this deck even more with cards like uh destiny heal phoenix and forcer being able to get rid of your opponent's cards even more so like i said there's a lot of cards you could add to this deck and to make it even more consistent and make it even a lot more powerful so i definitely worth think it's worth running another really good card to add to the deck that i run a lot is infinite impermanence infinite impermanence is a really great hand trap uh basically what it does is you can use it from your hand or if it's set it negates all cards in that column if you flip it up but it negates your opponent's uh card you know from their monster and basically the target for that is hugging wings uh so, Suship has a bad matchup against Runic. Most decks do at the moment. Runic can just mill you out, and all your sorry is on the grave. You can't do anything, or the banished, they can't do anything. Uh, being able to stop that from happening is really important. So, I've been running cards like Infinite and Permanence to stop that. Um, other than that, let's get into the other extra deck ones I recommend running. And uh, first one would be like Utopia Draco Future. This is a really good boss monster. And the fact is that it's a, a monster negate that's really easy to get to in this deck. You're going to be exiting like crazy. And as long as long, long as you're exiting uh, monster cards, you can just overlay into Ut uh, Utopic Draco Future. And this is more negates, more interruptions for your opponent to go through. And it's a really good card. Definitely a really good boss monster. Disgustico Emerald is a really good rank 4, and this allows you to shuffle 3 cards uh, from your graveyard into the deck, then draw 1 card. It recycles your Sauris, really good to run. One Abyss Driller. Abyss Driller is this amazing card to consider playing because the simple fact is that it negates graveyard effects. I had this come up recently when I was playing against Orcist. Uh, my was, uh, so my opponent uh, cleared my board. I came back, I was able to get a Bistrella plus uh, a Gunkin X Seeds monster on the field, and I used a Bistrella on the turn, detached, and they couldn't use any of the Orcus Graveyard effects anymore, and that allowed me to win the game. So Bistrella is definitely worth running. Uh, I do recommend it, and I think everybody should be running at least one copy, especially here soon when Tell Elements come out in about three months. Uh, this is going to be a lifesaver. Uh, Evil Sword Exxon Knight is a card I cut from my deck, but it is a really good card to say the least. And what this card does is once per turn, uh, once per chain during your main phase or your opponent's battle phase, if your opponent has total cards in the hand or field than you do, quick effect, you can attach one base over this card and destroy all other cards on the field. It's really good. That's something I like to run not often, but I was running it for a while, then I ended up cutting it. You could run Zodiac packages since you could easily get to level 4 monsters on the field for Tarkin 9. You could rank it up to Bilbo, then go into Trident. That is 100% possible in this deck, and uh, it's not a bad play. Play though, if you want to have just another boss monster that pops cards. Uh, Baguska, if you want to stall out for a couple of turns to get cards, this is really good. Time D3 Doer is a fantastic card, uh, especially in this deck, deck, since it's really easy to make. Once per turn, in the Swamp 5 phase, you can attach the top card of the opponent's deck to this card. The quick effect, you attach three cards, uh, three different types of cards from this material, and they apply the following effects depending on what, 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 on what it was detached. If you detach a monster, you can banish the cards in the end phase, and that's not, that balances that may not could uh, dodge like destruction effects. If you detach spells, you could draw one card, or if you detach a trap, you can place one card, face up card, and the opponent controls on top of their deck. So you can stack the opponent's deck for you, and it's a really good card. I personally run this almost all the time. We got one number 60. Number 60 is really here for one main one uh, reason only, and it's because you could double the attack of one monster you control. And that allows you to, to go 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 low into OTA lines really easily. We got one Magic Spirit. This card is amazing because it allows you to have two really big ranks, I mean two big plays. First one is it's when the card is XE summon, you could detach one material from this card, then add one level four uh one level four higher normal monster from your deck or graveyard to your hands. 
and that is straight sorry. And if this card has a normal on service material, which it's easy to do in this deck, at the start of the damage step, this card battles an opponent's monster with the same attribute as a normal monster or a magic key monster in your graveyard. You could detach one material from this card. So the fact is, it's a really good card, definitely worth running. And uh, the three archetypes you want to have if you run the magic key build would be dark, fire, and then you have light with like this side frame fame, uh, game of gear gamma. So you have three targets: you have fire, you have dark and light, and you have fire just in case. But it doesn't come up that often. But it is definitely worth running uh, just for that search effect. Uh, we have the bot, one of the good boss monsters, and clear as the deck is Zeus, very really easy to make. Uh, you could run Pedipa and Akana because two effect monsters on the field are really easy to get to. And that's for like your Fusion Destiny line if you want to go that route. And the other card that's really easy to make in this deck is Infratrack Fortress Mega Clops. Mega Clops is just an amazing card. What this card does is unaffected by monsters' effects except those of Xyz monsters. Cannot be destroyed by battle except with an Xyz monster. You can target one Xyz monster in your graveyard and one card on the opponent control. Special summon that monster from your graveyard. And if you do, attach the opponent's card to it as material. Uh, so the simple fact is this is really good towers and it's hard for your opponents to get, uh, make it out, especially in uh, best of one formats if, if they're not prepared for it. So, yeah, with that, these are cards I would consider, or archetypes I would consider. Like I said, uh, there's a lot of different ways to build it. You can build a peer, you could do magic key, you could do adventure, time, thieves. There's a lot of different ways, and uh, they're all really good, valuable, and they're a lot of fun. With that out of the way, let's get into the deck, the deck list of the decks I've been playing. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, guys, so this is an example of what a pure list will look like. And basically, for a pure list, it's very simple. You want to have a lot of hand traps to get your opponent's boards. And then on top of that, just I mean, like, uh, just straight uh, having a lot of uh, sorry cards and I mean, uh, sushi cards in your deck to continue your plays. Uh, with this one, we have nine copies of Sushi Sorry. We got three Sorries. We got three Reds and three Painful Decisions. We should always have Sorry. And on top of that, we're running lots of hand traps to get your opponent. We got three Max Seas. We got the Gamma Packages. We got three Ash Blossoms. We got three Event of Permanence. We got one Cross Out Designator and two Call by the Grave. We're also like wanting Run Poppy's Feather Duster just to get rid of your opponent's back row because stun decks can hurt this a lot. So Eltledge and Labyrinth are kind of big big ones and this kind of helps you out and keeps you competitive uh in this one we are running the utopia double nothing line with the utopia and the utopia double uh that allows you to get the card double nothing and that doubles his attack to ten thousand when it attacks a monster and that allows you to otk like nobody's business and like i said this is what appeal deck would kind of look like if you guys are interested you guys could just take a look at it here so it's you know like i said all sorry's the hand traps, nothing too really big important. Your Ikras, your Sisterus, your Reds, your Unis, painful decisions. Uh, Pot of Extravagance, uh, not my favorite card. You could actually cut this for anything else you really want to add. You could add more hand traps or just anything that you, you might want to run. Uh, but for me personally, I've, I've been running it and I like it. It allows me to get to my plays and sacrificing at least three of the extra deck, you know, to try to. It, it, try to draw one card isn't that bad so uh but yeah with that all the way this is what a pure version looks like and uh let's get into uh adventure then we'll show you a magic key build also all right everybody so this is what the uh adventure build kind of looks like so it's the exact same concept you want to max out on your uh gunkin cards so i'm running three of each so three sorry three ikra three sisru three red and three uni uh, I'm running my hand traps. I'm running two Max C, two Ash Blossom, uh, one Cross Out Designator, two uh, Called by the Grave, and three Event Impermanence. But I'm also running cards like Foolish Burial, and this allows me to get my uh, adventure line going, like with, with my Water Enchantress, my White of Animus Seer, and my Griffin. Now, this does make the deck more expensive because there's a lot of Ultra Wares, but it does increase the ceiling of the deck and make it very viable. So, like I said, uh, this is what the deck kind of looks like, if you guys are interested uh, in this type of build. I was able to climb uh, last season, I was able to climb this deck all the way up, uh, all the way up into uh, Diamond 1. I don't recommend it, but it was a lot of fun and I had a blast with it. You can get to Diamond with this very easily. Uh, and uh, yeah, so like I said, this is what the uh, Adventure Sioux Ship kind of looks like. And now we'll show you the uh, Magic Key version of the deck. 
All right, guys. So here is the magic key version of the deck that I was run uh, that I'm building. Uh, there will be a video of this coming up probably uh, would say next month, uh, depending on how my scheduling goes. But we'll see how that works out. For this one, it's very simple. If we're just combining it with the magic key cards, because the magic key cards are really good, so you want at least one sky blast over this. We're running three saris because saris are really important. But this is where the decision comes from. I'm only running one ikra. I'm running two sisterus. Three uh, reds and three unis, because these are, in my opinion, are the better ones. Uh, we're running cards like uh, Mateel. Mateel, this is a great uh, extender in the deck, no matter what. We are running cards like the side frames. We're running Max C. We're running Ash Blossom, Cross Out, Designator, and Call by the Grave. I did cut uh, if in a permanence from this build, but you can run it if you want. Um, other than that, we're running the Ritual cards, uh, uh, Beto Blast, uh, Buster, and we're also running. Uh, uh, um, mech mortar. Uh, this allows us to get really good uh, cards up on the field. Uh, that are really hard for your opponent to actually out. So it increases the ceiling of the deck even more. And with this one, we have running terraforming because of the fact of magic ward. We're not using the uh, gunk and Sioux ship field spell. We got one T map Mel T. Uh, three painful decision. Two call by the grave. We're running one daily special and one magic unlocking. All these cards are really great. And this is probably the more competitive version of the deck. If you're actually interested in uh, making it competitive, uh, you know, viable. Um, I was able to bring magic key here to diamond. So I'm pretty sure I could bring magic key to ship the diamond myself. I'm going to be trying that here soon. Uh, stay with me on that. The big difference in the extra deck for this one is I'm running the Zodiac package using Zodiac, Chakanine, Barbour, and Trident. I'm also running a Synchro uh, with Magic E Fiend, which is really easy to get to in this deck. Uh, and I'm also running uh, one Link with uh, Buguki, Bu, Bujinki. I, nah, I mispronounced that terribly. But this, what this card does is really interesting. If this card is Link Summon, you can special summon two monsters with the same level one from a hand and one from a graveyard but negate their effects immediately after this card resolves xz's xz someone one xz's monster using those two monsters so the simple fact is this allows you to go and since we have so many level four monsters that the card should almost always be live and it only requires two monsters at the same level and almost all of our deck is level four so like i said this is a really fun deck to play and uh i can't wait there will be an independent video for this in the future and uh, when I get to that, I hope you guys all enjoy. But uh, yeah, with that all the way, let's just get into two little games. And I'll kind of talk you through some combo lines. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. So like I said, I hope you guys all enjoy in this video. And I'll catch you all though in the next part. All right. So this first game here is against Math... Uh, that Math Mech, sorry. It's a first uh, Orcist uh, Mech Knight. And... Uh, this is a really interesting combo. I kind of give him credit. I open up pretty decent here. Uh, so I activate Ride of Adamus here, just trying to bait out any uh, negation. He gets Maxi, but I have called by for this Maxi. So I'm feeling pretty decent here in this. So you're going to see this is the adventure version of the deck, as you can probably already tell by the Ride of Adamus here if I'm playing. So uh, map here. So. The Ride of Atmosphere is going to allow me to get a token that gets me Faithful Adventure. Faithful Adventure is going to allow me to get uh, Griffin. I'm going to discard the Draco back. Draco back effect is going to activate in the graveyard, attaching itself to the token. Now, at this point, I activate Griffin Rider. Uh, so now I'm feeling really confident. I activate Uni in my hand. I reveal Sari and it's going to special summon Uni. And it's going to special summon Sari on top of that. I target uh, Sari, making it a level 5. And I do get uh, Sari Red for follow up play. And at this point, I go into Super Dreadnought. Super Dreadnought is just a negate on my opponent's turn on top of that, and I do get sorry to my deck. Uh, I activate, I mean, I use the effect, I draw one card, I drew sorry, which was just great. Now I'm going to activate sorry rides effect, and I'm going to uh, reveal sorry, special summoning itself, and special summoning one uh, Gunkin card for my deck, and I get Sisuru. Sisuru effect is going to, at this point, XZ's, and I'm going to go into class carrier. Then class carrier effects are going to allow me to get uh, two cards. First, I get a draw, and I get a search. I drew Ash Blossom, which is amazing. In a search, I search out this field spell this time around, activating this build spell, making my Gunkin cards uh, immune, immune to destruction, which I realized at this point is a misplay. I should have overlaid these to uh, F0, but I wasn't thinking at that moment. At this point, he goes into Mech Knight Popol. Popol Knight is going to activate its effect targeting itself. I do negate this with Griffin. 
uh, because I don't want him to get card advantage. So I'm just like trying my best to negate stuff and just trying to see how much I could slow him down. Uh, at this point, he goes into blue sky. I'm like, okay, blue sky effects going to activate. I have ash blossom, so that's two negates I just ate up there. So blue sky effect is going to get negated. Feeling pretty confident still. And now he normal summons the normal mech knight. And at this point, he goes into Nightmare Phoenix. Nightmare Phoenix is going to discard a card. He discards Nightmare, and he gets rid of my Faithful Adventure. Nightmare effects are going to activate, banishing itself. To send Hop 4, Hop 4 effects are going to activate, banishing itself. And that's going to get uh, uh, Gearsu. Gearsu is going to send Ward Wand. Ward Wand effects are going to special something. I mean, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Uh, yeah, at this point, I think I pretty well lost... Uh, he goes into Galatea. Galatea's effect is going to bring back, and he gets uh, the Ami Negate. I'm like, yeah, there's nothing I can really do about here. He goes into Long Gearsu. Long Gearsu could pop a, I mean, uh, to bounce a card, but he doesn't do that. He goes into Deer Gearsu to bounce a card. So he sends one card directly to my uh, graveyard, and he sends uh, Super Dreadnought. But Gunkin Su Ship's going to activate, and I do get Sorry. Sorry effect is going to allow me to go into regular Dreadnought. I feel I'm pretty confident at this point my opponent is going to lose if he doesn't get rid of my token, by the way. And that's how he goes on to lose this effect. So I'm going to wait to see what happens. He negates Dreadnought's effect, which to draw a card, I'm fine with that. Uh, at this point, he goes into battle, and he attacks over my Dreadnought. And at this point, he misplayed. He should have attacked over the token. And, um... Yeah, so at this point, I activate the Draco back. I do bounce his Orcist. And at this point, it's for game. I have uh, Ikra. I normal summon. Uh, sorry, I normal summon Ikra. And I use the effect of Gunkin Sea Ship, uh, the Seaport, to stack uh, Sari on top of my deck. And at this point, I activate Ikra. I reveal Sari. I get Sari to my field. And at this point, I'm going to attack for quite a bit of damage before I link off. I mean, before I Xyz. So, feeling really confident. <laughs> There's not too much my opponent could do. At this point, I, uh, you know, exes off to Abyss Drawler. And then I go into Zeus just in case. And I end my turn. At this point, during his draw phase, activate Abyss Drawler. So he can't activate any graveyard effect. And this cut him off of his Hop Horror. So I'm feeling really confident. And at that point, my opponent just concedes. So yeah. This, that just shows the power of this deck. I, like I said, in a best of one, this deck does really well. And as you can see, the combo lines are very easy to understand and how the deck is played. With that, let's get into our last game here. And I hope everybody is enjoying it. All right. So this last game here is against Predipant uh, Despia. Um, yeah, not my favorite deck to play against. This deck does struggle against this one. I struggle with this Despia in general. Despia to can just out advantage us really easily, but I have a really good hand here. Uh, so I activate Rad of Atmosphere. I'm going to see if he has any negates. He has no Max C, no Ash, so I do get my token right away. Uh, no Max C at least. I don't know about Ash. So I activate Red and I reveal Sorry in my hand. At this point, I normal summon Red and I do get Gunkin uh, Uni. And at this point, I get Super Dread not onto my field. Super Dead that allows me to draw a card, and Faithful Adventure effect allows me to get a um, it allows me to get the Draco back for my token. He Ash Blossoms that, uh, yeah, you could chain block by the way. So he, I think he's trying to Ash the draw one, but that doesn't work that way. Um, so yeah, Faithful Adventure gets negated. I don't care, so that's perfectly fine with me. And at this point, I draw one card still. And I get another Ikra. I normal summon Sorry, and I activate. I mean, and I special summon Ikra. I use Ikra's effect, revealing the top three of my deck. Just to see what I can hit. I get nothing. I'm like, okay, well that sucks. And at this point, I get Time Deep Redoer, and uh, then I activate Faithful Adventure. I get Griffin Rider. I get rid of my other Ikra at this point. Then I special summon my uh, Griffin Rider into defense position. And at this point, I'm feeling really confident that my opponent really can't do too much. I activate Time Deep Redoer in the standby phase, and I get his Instant Fusion. I'm feeling really confident here. My opponent Cyclones to Faithful Adventure. I'm like, okay. And he just sets one. I'm like, okay. I think I'm in a winning position at this moment. I get Ash Blossom. So I have a lot of guards here. In being my same my face, I'm going to attach. And I get his Archlord Christia. I'm like, that is a really cool addition to, uh, you know, the Predator Pet decks. I'm not going to lie. Uh, at this point, my opponent is doesn't really have anything. So I think I can win. Uh, I attack over his strategy. I attack for 2,000, 2,400, and 2,900. And that is game. 
So yeah, my opponent kind of bricked. Uh, but yet again, it just shows this deck can put up a lot of uh, really cool inboard, and uh, it's definitely worth playing. So yeah, so like I said, uh, I know this isn't my best video. I know it's longer. Um, yeah. I know I probably missed a lot. I know I didn't go as in depth with the history of the cards and stuff like that. But for my very first time trying to make an in depth guide and how it all works and the stuff you can't add or change to the deck, I do guys. I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys are interested in more sushi videos, I do have a playlist on my uh, my uh, channel for Yu Gi Oh in particular for play uh, for deck list. And uh, yeah, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. And with that out of the way, I'll catch you all next time. Thank you. Bye.